Yeah! <laughs> what up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Today, 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 we're coming at y'all with a good old Foul Friday. Oh, yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? I know, I know. Whew, we got a lot to go through today, but at the end, we'll be opening We'll be opening one of your guys' packages that y'all sent me. Uh-huh. Uh, but today on this Foul Friday, y'all, I wanted to cover a bunch of different questions. Uh, I had a hard time deciding what I was going to title this video. I'm like, should we do it about goose calling? Well, not yet. Should we do it about shotguns? Well, not yet. Should we do it about ammo? Maybe. So, what I'm going to do today is I am going to cover all the questions like all the basic questions that i've been getting because i'll tell you what a lot of the questions they're all the same like when are the ducks calls going to be back in stock first and foremost i want to get out of the way i know they've been out of stock all summer long we sold out last season and you know here at ducks we're a one-man band we're not the biggest company in the world so what we do we produce a bunch of the calls most of the calls that we need throughout the season at the beginning so this year, we should have a couple swaths of production, probably two. The first one being August 20th. That is when the new ducks calls should hit the ground running. And let me tell you, they're all acrylic. That's all I gotta say. And the price point's amazing. That's another thing I gotta say. <laughs> but I wanted to get that out of the way first and foremost, because a lot of you, you're picking up your calls and I'm glad to hear it. A lot of you are wanting new calls. I'm just glad to hear that y'all are blowing them because I'm telling you what, I blow mine every single day. And I mean it, every single day. Me and Bodie, we were out here last night at about nine o'clock at night just jamming out, me and him. I give him this one here and he just goes to town. First and foremost, with the season coming up, get your calls on them lips, get to blowing, get the muscles rejuvenated, you know, by the way, I will be doing a goose calling tutorial video and possibly a duck one. You got to let me know if you want to see the duck one. But so like I said, today is just to go through the questions. I really want to answer uh, most of these questions that are commonly asked because there's been a lot of them lately. Uh, I think the second most common question as of late has been uh, well, the first part of it is Bobby, I want an aftermarket extended choke. What do you use? I want what you use. You kill birds with it, yada, yada, yada. Now, first off, there's many good, good choke companies out there. And another thing, you're, a lot of you ask me where to get it. Guys, you can get it anywhere online. You can buy a choke online, your local gun store. Come on. The Carlson Cremator, long range, ported. That is what I love. It's my favorite choke amongst all of them that I've tried, I've tried Pattern Master, I've tried Kicks, I love Kicks High Flyer Full, that's another good choke. So those two, I'd say those two right there, that the Kicks High Flyer Full and the Carlson Cremator Ported Long Range, those are my two favorite chokes, I believe. Another thing, the second part of the choke question is uh, a lot of you have recently purchased a uh, extended aftermarket choke and a lot of you are confused why you have to keep screwing it in. Now, no, nothing's wrong with the choke. No, nothing's wrong with your gun. Nothing's wrong with your gun. Nothing's wrong with the choke that you bought. Uh, that right there is common. And it hap I'll, I'll tell you right now, every time I'm shooting, whether it's clay rock or hunting, after every shot, at some point, it's just a knee-jerk reaction, just literally muscle memory at this point. I screw it, I just make sure it's tight. Boom, and it's always loose, a lot of the times. It's just something you gotta get used to. A lot of them back out a hair a bit. Now, I'm not saying that's good by no means, but I'm just saying when you keep uh, your gun clean and your choke threads clean, they tend to stay a little loose, which is fine. It's better than them being seized up. You really wanna keep them choke threads clean. Take that choke out every time you clean your gun, not every other time, every time, especially, there's another big, big tip for all my water hunters out there. If you do get an extended choke, the day after you hunt water, especially if it rained on you, missed on you, if you got your gun wet, take that choke out, clean and lube it up. Spray a little lube in there when you put it back in. That right there will save you uh, a lot of headache, a lot of money, and a lot of time, possibly even ruining your shotgun trying to get that choke out. So keep them clean, keep them lubed. 
Okay, now y'all, the third question, number three, the third most asked question. This honestly is right up there with the most asked, probably like the choke question. Dive bomb silhouettes. Guys, it's a silhouette, it's flat. It's not a full body. And I will tell you what, there's a lot of you that are interested in these right here. Now, these are non-flocked. See how they're non-flocked? Hold on just a minute. And along with the silos comes the socks. A lot of you watched my hunts last year where I used silos and socks together instead of full bodies at all. So this combination really does work. Now, there's a difference. If you're down here, uh, Kansas, uh, you know, Washington, that over there, or Oklahoma, Texas, where all the lessers and the cacklers are gonna be, a bunch of these. You need a bunch of these, like 50 plus dozen, right? But all you honker hunters, all you Minnesotans, all you Wisconsins, all you Northern, heck, even all you North Dakotans, South Dakotans, all you Northern boys, uh, you honker boys, um, I would tell you to not get these, don't get the socks, but yes, the dive bomb silhouettes, flocked or non-flocked, it don't matter. I personally, I like the flocked heads. See how much darker they are? So if you have a chance, I would purchase the flocked heads on the silos and the socks. The socks come flocked no matter what. The silos, you can buy non or flocked. Uh, I've had a lot of questions, Bobby, do they work? Should I buy them? Should I buy more of these to add to my three dozen full bodies that I already have? Absolutely you should. Absolutely, you're not gonna break the bank. And guys, you can get a bunch of these. I mean a bunch for the price of one dozen full bodies, let me tell you. And I'm not, that's no sales pitch. I'm telling you, they kill birds. Y'all seen my videos last year. Very, 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 very minimal. I mean, very few hunts last year were there any full bodies i mean it, the only time i really used full bodies last year was when i was with someone else and i didn't bring my own decoys so question number three done <sighs> question number four and again this i don't know if it's if this one's actually asked more than the last ones but this one is asked a ton bobby this is how it goes bobby i got two dozen three dozen floaters and I own half of them are teal, half of them are mallards. I want some pintails. Uh, should I sell my teal to get some pintails? Or how the question goes, Bobby, in later season, should I take my, my teal out? Dude, this is what I tell y'all. Two different ways to, to describe this. If you're a public land hunter, guys, Diversify your spread. Try to make it look different, especially if you're consistently hunting high, high pressured birds on public scenarios. That being said, me, I don't care if it's November, December, if I go hunt public, I'm never, ever taking my teal decoys out of my spread. Nor am I ever, ever, ever gonna take, I'm trying to find one here, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. I'm never gonna take, my coot, my black coot decoy out of my spread either. If I'm hunting public, public man, you want to change up your spread. Honestly, make it look different. Now, private land, private land's different. If you find a, uh, if you find a little farm pond, let's say you find a farm pond and there's, let's say 40 mallards on it. And that's the only thing you see get up. I would probably leave the till at home, especially here in Kansas, the till are kind of gone once December comes. So I'd probably leave the till at home if I had enough floaters to get the job done. Now, obviously I do. Now all these floaters, I think we're gonna end up selling all these floaters to be honest with you because I'm replacing them all with dive bomb floaters, which you guys will see that video coming. I'll I'm gonna do a big, big unboxing with you guys. Gonna be a lot of floaters to rig up, like 20 plus dozen. It's gonna be an amazing video, so stay tuned for that one. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fourth question, and again, it is asked a million plus times. Bobby, what is your preference? What's your two cents on mojos, lucky ducks, spinning wing decoys? Okay, if you're in a place where, uh, no, hold on a minute, you know what? By the way, big shout out to Hometown Outdoor and Power and McPherson for hooking me up with this mower. Isn't she pretty? 
drop a comment down below if that's one pretty good looking mower right there. Thank goodness for them too. Uh, they saved me a lot of time and money. But back onto the question. Okay, if you reside in a state that allows electric spinning wing decoys, guys, use them. Couple things, uh, field hunting mallards in the field on a sunny day, game over, game over. I really don't care how pressured those mallards are with spinner decoys at that point. When the sun's out and you have a mojo's wing just and reflecting, they can't resist it. Game over. Number two, now for you public guys, I've always taken a mojo with me all the time. I always take it. I always start the morning with it on. Now, a lot of you duck hunters know as the morning progresses, as the sun comes up, ducks, especially on public, become weary fast. So a little side note, guys, when, when it's sunrise and it's shooting light, be ready on them public situations because that's where you're going to kill your ducks. I can promise you. Don't expect your ducks to come, you know, 30 minutes after shooting light an hour. It's going to be right away. So uh, I always, 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 always run a mojo uh, public situations. Like I was saying, if I start seeing groups of birds really flaring and not liking it, I will take it out and try it. Do you, if they're not liking it, try to do something different. If they're just, if you've seen the second group of birds, I don't care if it's a single, I don't care if it's a five pack coming at you and they're like, oh no, at 50, 60 yards, go ahead and pull that mojo. You might rearrange your spread. You might spread your spread out. You might tighten it up depending on if it's windy. So that's just my two cents on mojos. I love them. Okay, I was originally only going to do five of the most asked questions, but I think we're going to have to do six here. So number five, I believe we're at number five, right? Boy, how it's always, it, it is asked, it's probably honestly should be the number one most asked question, uh, but shotguns, guys. I, I've talked about it a ton in our farm hunts that Jordan and I do and pigeon hunts, uh, trying to answer your guys' questions about shotguns. Uh, a lot of you are just like, Bobby, do you know how the Stoger M3500 is? Because it's cheap, right? And it's a good three and a half inch I think it's three and a half inch. Might only be three inch chamber. I don't know much about them. I have heard that this is just me referring. So that that question right there about the M3500, I've heard a lot of good things. It's a cheaper gun, but I've heard a ton of great things. I've personally never ever shot one or handled one. I think I've held one and it was a little bulky filling, but everybody that I know that has one or had one or knows someone that has one, has always said amazing things. I've never heard a bad thing about it. So that's my two cents on that. Uh, another shotgun question is, Bobby, what type of gun should I get? I don't wanna break the bank. Um, that, that's the main thing. Guys, you know me. I love my Benelli SB3, the Benelli SB2. That's a beautiful gun. Winchester SX4, cheaper. I have heard, never shot it, but I've heard beautiful gun. Uh, very, very, very minimal problems with it. A gun that is getting sent to me, a new affinity, new oh, Franke affinity. They finally got a hold of me. You all will see the video coming. Cannot wait, uh, but it is a new affinity three and a half inch elite. And she's a beauty. She's going to be my new beauty. So if I was to say anything, I go with the products that I trust. And that is not just my sponsors, but that Franke, I am not sponsored by Franke. I love Franke. That gun, that my affinity was like, Seven, 750, 800 bucks max. And I've had that gun for four years and it has produced most of the videos that y'all have watched. I mean, probably 90% of the shotgun shooting, waterfowl, dove, pigeon videos, it has produced it. And I think in the four years that I have owned that Franke Affinity, it's misfired. A, there's been some bad shells, but it's misfired on its own, never because it malfunctioned. It needed cleaned. I cleaned it. Every time, cleaned it, never would have an issue. So, my two cents, if you have the money, the SB3, the Benelli SB3 is probably one of the most beautiful guns on the market. Uh, but if you wanna save a little bit of money and get you something that's very comparable, I mean, save a bunch of money, look at the Franke Affinity. They're beautiful. Whew. Okay, number six, and I think this will be the last one and I saved it for last on purpose. This is just a confidence thing, y'all. This is not skill. Bobby, this is how it goes. <laughs> Bobby, 
Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of competition for some primary fields in my area. That's one way it goes. Bobby, uh, how do you go about getting permission on so much private ground? Guys, it's called being a man. I really don't know how better to put it to you. Um, it's called talking to people. It's called uh, just having the guts to call the guy. Or if you see the farmer uh, in his driveway working on something, pull in there. If he's busy, say, hey, sorry to bother you. I'll uh, talk to you next time. Be respectful. I would hope, I'm just hoping, and I'm not making a joke here, I'm hoping that at minimal 90% of this viewing audience, it being waterfowl hunting mostly, I would hope that y'all understand what I'm talking about as far as just use, use your utmost respect that you know. You know what I mean? Hey John, nice to meet you. Hope you're doing good. Uh, I, was, I was calling to ask about this uh, hunting season. Is there any way that I could hunt your property for ducks and geese this year? If he says, oh no, uh, someone's already leased it. What do I say back? I say, oh, okay. Well, if there's ever an opportunity to lease it, please let me know. I'd like to be on the list. Just be courteous. You know, don't be abruptful. Don't be like, well, I'd like to have it if it ever comes up. Be nice, man. You gotta, you gotta use a nice tone in your voice. If you come off to that farmer as a Mr. Know-it-all or Mr. Big Pants, I can tell you, 97.7% of them farmers are not gonna like you right from the get-go. So, farmers, they're not dumb at all. They're some of the smartest humans on this, on this planet. I mean, think about it. They've dealt with every joker out there, and especially hunting related. They've seen, they've heard, and they've had to deal with it all. They've had to pull old Tommy boy out of uh, the muddy field when he completely wrecked his field and they had to pull him out with the tractor and little Tommy didn't even pay him 20 bucks. They've had to do that before. So that's why you have to use all the respect that you possibly can to that farmer. And when you tell them you're not gonna rut up their field, when you tell them you're gonna pick up all your trash and shells, when you tell them you're gonna leave it better than the way you found it, by God, you better. I'm done. That's my spiel. Oh, here we go. I hope I answered uh, some of the main questions that y'all have been uh, wanting me to answer for y'all. I've had a ton of DMs on Instagram, and honestly, between the comments on the videos and, and Instagram questions, that's where a lot of these came from. So, if you have any other questions, and if you want me to do another video like this where I go over all of your questions, drop them down below. I will tally them up, you know, and, and we can do another one of these. But. Here is, I'll oh, save the letter for last. What is this? What is this? I have no idea what, looks like it's coming from a company. Uh-huh, uh-huh, what is, oh, ho, ho, ho. I know what this is. And this is amazing. This is Strike Force. Oh my goodness, you all are gonna love this. Wow, I was wondering why it was so heavy. Well, this is why. Hold on just a second. Dear Bobby, my son Julian and I love your waterfowl videos, magnet fishing videos, and ducks waterfowl gear. We are so happy for you and your family on the new property and hunting lodge you are working on. I was born and raised in Caldwell, Kansas, so it is great to see another Kansas boy doing well. Uh, then he goes on to say on a recent video, you're magnet fishing at Marion County Lake, and my parents live there. Oh, sorry to hear about your mom, man. Darn it. He goes on to say, I work for Strike Force Bowling Company that makes custom bowling balls and pins. In the box, you will find a custom bowling ball with the Ducks logos on it. We thought it would be a great piece to display in your new lodge. We hope you love it. He said, thanks for uh, keeping your videos content clean, educational, and fun so families can watch them together. Uh, Jeff, Jeff and Julian Newkirk. Thank you so much, Jeff. Golly, look at this. This, this is sweet. <laughs> I got a custom bowling ball, y'all. I'm guessing that it still would probably, yeah, it still needs drilled for your fingers. Look at this. <laughs> look at that, dude. What? How sick. A custom Bobby Guy Ducks Bowling Ball. Jeff, thank you so much. I'm gonna keep this for the rest of my life. 
That is one of the coolest gifts I have ever gotten in my life. By far. Man, y'all are amazing. You all gonna make me shed a tear out here. Cause I've been getting laid back, baby, you should know that. I don't need your criticism, pessimism. I've been keeping it on the DL. Got a girl that keeps it real.